Here are the most common mistakes most real estate agents are making today with buyers. Stay tuned. What's up everybody, BC here. Welcome back to another video. Hey, if it's your first time visiting the channel or if you haven't already, because I still see that about two thirds of my views are coming from non-subscribed individuals, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell icon to be notified of all new videos, the new schedule. So you know it now is Monday, Wednesday, Friday. This main channel will have a video and I'll do additional lives on the other days, okay? So the most common mistakes, this may be a multiple part series. I have five that I'm gonna share with you in this video that agents are making with buyers, okay? I'm gonna explain them briefly, give you a little bit of a rundown, so be sure that you absolutely at all costs avoid these unless they're extenuating circumstances or it is an exception to the rule, okay? Number one, you guys jump on buyers too hard like piranhas, meaning this, you get too aggressive, too quickly, it's all about are you gonna buy, are you gonna buy, are you gonna buy, you throw the conversation away, you put your own needs before them, Okay? You don't realize you're doing this by jumping on them like that, but that's actually what you're doing. And whether you think that's true or not, the most important thing is that that's what they feel. So if they feel that, they're not going to want to work with you. Okay, So we need to whew, take a breath, take a step back, and take your time. Okay, You have to remember, for the average person who's buying a property, this is one of the biggest transactions they're ever going to go through. So stress levels, emotional levels, and just craziness in their mind and, and the possibilities of, of what can go wrong or what can go right, it's just, it's crazy. Their mind is just going, eh, it's wrenching like that, like two gears just going, Mer. and they're getting advice, probably false advice and bad advice from other people. So you need to understand that. You need to present yourself like the calm, right? The eye of the storm. The, hey, I can take care of you, you may be stressed, but guess what, when you come in contact with me and you work with me, everything's taken care of, everything is gonna be cool, okay? That's kind of the voice that you need to have and the persona to them. But by you being too aggressive too soon and not asking questions, not taking a step back, you're pushing them away and you wanna make sure that you avoid that at all costs, okay? Number two, okay, and this builds off the first one is, agents are not leading the conversation properly. Okay? In most cases, they're calling or inquiring about a home. They ask you for the price. You just respond with the price and they ghost you. Right? You need to be able to effectively take control of the conversation. One of the basics that we learn in sales, if you haven't already and you need to drill this with people, this is why you need to role play and practice, is the one who's asking the questions is the one who's in control. If you allow the client to always ask the questions and lead the conversation, they don't know where to lead it. You as the professional salesperson know how to lead the conversation to not only answer more of their questions, but lead it to them actually getting in the property, writing an offer, getting uh, pre-approved, or whatever it is that they want to do. People don't realize it. The customer literally, if you allow them to, 99% of the time will talk themselves out of anything because of preconceived notions, because of old mental conditioning of who you are as a realtor and salespeople and all that stuff, and I get it, okay? But you need to be skilled, you need to be understanding, and you need to have the communication skills to be able to navigate through this and walk them through some of these misbeliefs, some of these misconceptions, some of these initial nerves, okay? So be sure that you're always asking questions, right? And make sure that you do present the next step all the time. You have your script or dialogue or whatever it is. You know your information about the property or properties that they're calling on, especially if it's your listing, and you're able to guide the conversation and not have those moments of dead silence where it gets awkward. That's where you're losing people, okay? You can't expect them to come up with all the, uh, the questions. You need to be able to effectively take control, ask the right questions, and lead them down to uh, a proper ending, which is to meet or do a consultation or whatever it is that you do specifically in your process, okay? Number three is you're showing them properties without having a pre-qualification. Now, I don't wanna get into a 20 minute explanation of why. You can have exceptions to the rule, sure. If somebody's coming from out of town, um, you know, if somebody's super elderly, for example, and they're super old school, you know, there can be exceptions to the rule. I'm not saying we never do this. However, that is the exception. Nine out of 10 times, we're gonna make sure we educate the person that they have a pre-qual before. And here's a quick snippet that I can add to that, right? Let me tell you why them looking is a disservice. Number one, if they're not ready to buy and they're not willing to get pre-qualified, which is typically the reason, right? They're not ready now, okay? If this person or this couple or whoever the buyer is or buyers, 
Let's say they look at certain types of homes that the price range is, as an example, 500,000, and they fall in love with it, and they're like, you know what, this is it. Now they're like, you know what, we're fired up, we wanna go get a pre-qualification, we wanna see what it is. Then, come to find out they only qualify for 350 or 400. Their dreams now are shattered, and any home, in most cases that they look at in the future, will never measure up to the one that they found before they got pre-qualified, and now it just tainted and ruined their buying experience. Now some people can get over that, but a lot of people won't. So it'll be nagging at the back of their mind. Yeah, this one's good, but it doesn't measure up to that one that we saw, and then it'll take them two years to buy a house. If they ever buy a house, they get discouraged, the realtor gets discouraged, and it's just crazy for everybody, okay? So we need to be able to effectively understand that, hey, Flip the script if you wanna to talk to them. Say, hey, if I was representing you at the, as the seller, would you want me to bring people in here who are not qualified? We promise and our duty is to bring you uh, pre-qualified, ready, willing, and able buyers who can purchase your home now, right? And who are willing to pay you top dollar, correct? Well, let's flip the script. If you were the seller, would you be happy, right? These are just some things to help you, okay? But more often than not, you wanna make sure that they are pre-qualified and through one of the next steps that I'm gonna give you, you can educate them on exactly why. Now. Can you show without pre-qualifications? Sure, you can do whatever the hell you want. I'm just telling you, if you wanna run a proper business and have proper processes in place, this is one of the things that you need to do, okay? Now, this next one adds on to that one. You're neglecting doing a proper buyer consultation, meaning before you just meet them at properties and you start, you meet with them, you assess their wants, their needs, what deal breakers are for them, you get to know them more, they get to feel you out, you build some trust, you build some connection with them, and they get some confidence in you uh, in you as the realtor, you can lay out the whole process for them, and a little bit of time invested up front goes a long way, because now they know about the process, they feel more comfortable, they know what's gonna happen. When crucial moments happen, like they have to write up the offer, you know, you get uh, a counter from uh, the seller, you've already prepared them for these moments. So even if there's bad news or good news, it's not so much of a shock when these moments happen now because you've already walked them through it and they've been through it. And you can remind them, remember when we first met and we discussed X, Y, Z? Well, now we're here. Isn't it exciting? Versus they're slapped with it in that moment for the first time ever, particularly writing an offer, because I know some of you are like, I can't get them to write an offer. And they're like, ah, deer in the headlights. This will help you prevent things like that from happening, okay? So do a proper buyer's consultation. Doesn't take longer than 20 or 30 minutes unless they have a ton of questions. And one of two things is gonna happen. Either they're gonna be more committed and they're gonna enjoy it, or through assessing their wants and needs, you're gonna determine that, hey, maybe now is not the best time for them to buy and they should wait because of financial situation, their credit, or whatever it is. This gives you an opportunity to set them up for success, whether it's buying now or in the future. And I wanna to add to this is we need to take, and we kinda of add this to the first one as well, get your own agenda out of it, man. Talk to the buyer, assess their wants and needs, and work for them. Stop thinking that, oh, well, if I work with them and I sell them this house, I make 15 grand. You're gonna get paid, dude, forget it. That's already a natural part of the process. But if you know it's not good for them to buy, tell them, okay? Educate them. Team up with you and your lender. You should have a trusted mortgage professional working with you. Guide people, because the people will be eternally grateful if you tell them, you know what, wait three or four months, you'll get a better rate, you'll get a better deal, whatever it is. They're gonna love you, they're gonna be a loyal customer, and guess what, they're gonna be giving you so many referrals that a year or two from now, you're gonna be like, you know what, that wait was worth it, and I'm glad I looked out for their wants and needs and not my own. So take your own agenda out of it, ladies and gentlemen, which is the number one biggest mistake especially if you're newer or you've been struggling and you need money. Again, that's your own personal problem. That's not their problem. Take your own shit out of it, okay? Here's the last thing. You're allowing the buyer to impose their schedule on yours, okay? Think about this. Other professionals outside of real estate, they have a process, they have a schedule, they have a system, and we abide by it. If we call the doctor, we call a lawyer, we call another professional, we meet on their time, we set, a, we set an appointment with their assistant, and then we go and we meet them at certain designated times in a certain window. Why don't you do that, realtors? Even if you're new, if you wanna establish a foundation, if you wanna have certain criteria, if you wanna hold yourself at a certain prestige level and be treated like a real business and a real salesperson, you need to conduct yourself and run your business like a real salesperson and business person. So you can tell the buyer, hey, I'm available between this time and this time for showings. 
When's the best that works for you? Well, I'm in work. Okay, can you get out of work maybe 30 minutes or an hour early? Ask the boss and let them know that you're buying um, you know, a property and, and to give you a little bit of leeway. They'll do that. Now, what I said right now, you need to have the courage to say that. Okay, now again, exceptions to the rule. If somebody's coming from out of town, it's that one fluke chance where they only have one day and it happens to impede with your schedule, okay, you can make an exception. But again, that is the exception, not the majority, okay? So set a schedule and it's gonna be different for all of you, okay? But have that designated time where you show buyers and, and you'll see how quickly when you establish that professionalism and that boundary, they'll respect it, okay? They'll respect it. But if you don't respect yourself, that's never gonna happen, okay? So, with that said, I'll list them again, we'll wrap it up, and we'll take it from there. Okay, number one, you jump on them too fast and you're too damn aggressive. Back off, take a breath. Number two, you're not leading the conversation properly. They don't know where to take the conversation, you do. Start showing it. Number three, you're showing them without pre-qualification. Stop that. Educate them, and then have the proper procedure and steps. Number four, you're neglecting doing a buyer's consultation. Make sure you do it. Set them up. A little bit of time invested up front saves you a lot of time and heartache in the long run. And lastly, stop putting their schedule over yours. Have your business processes, have your systems, have your schedule, run yourself like a real business and watch how people will respect it and it's gonna be better for the both of you, okay? With that said, ladies and gentlemen, this is BC. Thank you again for watching. Um, if you would like for me to continue this series, go ahead and leave a comment below. If there's something specifically you would like for me to cover, go ahead and leave a comment below. I'm always open to hear what you have to say. Be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. A couple of quick announcements to wrap up the video. My two new channels, my vlog, Personal Brian Casella Show channel, and my podcast channel, Supreme Being. Make sure you subscribe to both of them. The links are in the description. And uh, number two, if you would like to partner with myself and my team, Go to partnerwithteambc.com. And lastly, if you want to learn more about this and really become a superstar, not only in business, but in life in general, I highly, highly, highly recommend you get on my Modern Success Program. It's a huge thriving community at this point of about 300 members. And we have our next in-person live event with guest speakers end of February in Vegas. It's going to be crazy. Okay, so that's it for this one. Team BC, we're out. Peace. Peace.